Welcome to the Revenue Builders Podcast, a weekly show featuring B2B sales leaders and executives. Hosted by five-time CRO John McMahon and force management co-founder John Kaplan, the show goes behind the scenes with the people who have been there, done that, and seen the results. If you enjoy our content, please subscribe, rate, and review the show to help us reach more people. Revenue Builders is brought to you by Force Management. We help companies improve sales performance, executing the growth strategy at the point of sale. Find us at forcemanagement.com. Enjoy today's episode. Hello, and welcome to the Revenue Builders podcast. I'm John Kaplan, here with my esteemed colleague, Johnny McMahon. Johnny, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Cap? I'm super excited today to, uh, with our guest. Can't wait. I am too. I am too, brother. Let me just do a quick introdu- introduction of, uh, <clears throat> of Coach here. So Coach was named one of the 50 most impactful coaches in um, JUCO men's basketball. He's the head basketball coach at East Los Angeles College for the last 10 seasons. Uh, at East LA, uh, Coach has amassed an amazing record of 214 and 54. He took a struggling program and turned it into a perennial playoff team, having coached the Huskies to nine consecutive postseason appearances. Uh, coach Mosley and his ELAC men's basketball program are currently featured in the 2021 season of Net- Netflix, critically acclaimed Emmy Award winning sports docuseries last chance you basketball and for our listeners if you have not had the chance to watch this series it's an absolute must you will see some unbelievable examples of leadership resilience uh, coaches meeting players wherever they're at and it's an it's you know at their emotional and physical journeys and it's just a much watch a, a must watch and in the pregame here Coach just informed us that um, they did another series, which will be uh, released. So they filmed the second series. It's the only time Last Chance U has done that for repeat seasons, uh, which is awesome. And uh, we can't wait to see that one. Let me just give a little bit before his time coaching of the Huskies. Coach Mo spent five years at the NCAA Division I California State University Bakersfield as assistant men's basketball coach. And before Cal State, Coach spent eight years at his alma mater, the Masters College, as an assistant coach for the legendary Bill Oates. While coaching at the Masters, his team uh, recorded uh, 152 wins and 97 losses while capturing two bursts to the NAIA National Elite Eight and Sweet 16. Coach is a local legend. Starring at the Washington Prep High School in uh, basketball and track. You didn't think I was going to go back this far, did you, Coach? Uh, and after high school, he made the choice to attend ELAC. So he's actually coaching at his alma mater, where he was a two-year team captain, starting point guard. Coach Mo led the Huskies to the playoffs, uh, two all-conference honors, and earned all-state honorable mention while leading the entire state of California in assists, which doesn't surprise me. Um, he then transferred to the Masters College, where he led his team to two regional championships and, and two NAIA Division I national tournament appearances. Coach was inducted into the Hall of Fame to, to, in 2004 at the Masters College. And then after college, he enjoyed a professional stint in Australia and Brazil. He holds multiple degrees in liberal arts and kinesiology and a master's in education. And he has a wonderful wife, LaShonda, and three wonderful children, Jackson, Mariah, and Leah. Johnny, please welcome our good friend, Coach Mosley from East Los Angeles College. Coach, I'm so excited watching you as a leader and what you do with those young men. It's really exciting to watch. Great to have you, man. Thanks thanks for having me. And uh, this is my second time around. I think as he was reading through, I, I, my proudest stat is the is the assist, man. We don't yeah. see too many assist guys anymore, man. I'm, no. We try to develop some assist guys and some leaders to go out there and assist others. So uh, that's kind of been my heart, man. But I love that stat, and you don't hear that stat anymore. No, and it's so you because we're going we're gonna to wind up talking to you about one of the things that 
in such feedback that we got in our uh, last series. And Rachel will put, or the producers will put in the show notes here, links to previous conversations that we've had with uh, Coach Mo. But Coach, you know, your servant leadership, we're going to come to that in a moment, and that's tied to your your assist record. Um, one of the things that I, you know, I talked about last chance university, would you just kind of share with us at the top level? It's been kind of a, probably a surreal experience for you over the last couple of years, last chance Netflix comes into your life. Uh, you know, you get the, the season in 2021 or 2020 actually gets documented. Can you kind of bring us up to date? Like what was, what has that whole experience been like for you? the school, the players, and kind of bring us up to current day? You know, well, it, it, it's kind of like the world, We, you know, we've been put on notice and the whole world has kind of been introduced to us and to myself and uh, to these young men and their lives, specific, specifically what has gone on in their lives and their stories. So what was shared was our stories and who we are and, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes you feel, I think the biggest thing that come out of it, I've, I've, I've kind of felt a little appreciated now. You kind of feel yeah, underappreciated a should. lot of times. And I think you, uh, you, 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 you have this chip on your shoulder and this underdog mentality. A lot of people that are successful, they ride that out and they use that for uh, motivation. And I kind of felt like that uh, there was an understanding of my background. There was an understanding of these young men background. And it was kind of like we, we took a breath and were able to say, okay, we, we were on the right path. And maybe there are people that understand there are people that that's living this out, uh, because the young men are misunderstood. Maybe I'm misunderstood. Sometimes I'm fighting and grinding. And a lot of people are like, they don't understand that we need help. They don't understand what we really need. And finally, I think, you know, it just took notice they, they we were able to share what we really need. And, and I think uh, the way they put it together and the team that edited, it, man, they, they put it together in a way that, that you know, it, it, it endeared us to to everybody who watched it. And so that helps. It helps. Uh, you know, I'm still a fighter. I still got a chip on my shoulder. I want to be successful. But but that helps. So I, I think that's uh, relieved some of the suppression and the tension uh, that we were dealing with daily in the fight. Uh, but along with that comes, comes the haters too. So we still get a lot that, uh, that, that we come up against, you know, wow. there's, there's, there's both sides of it. There's some that yeah. support us. And then there's some that want to hate and say, well, jealous maybe. There's, yeah. There's a lot of jealousy. So there's a lot of emotions. There's a, there's a lot going on, but, uh, you know what? I'm, I really, you know, I, I thank God I got the opportunity to share the story. You did a, you, they did, Netflix did such an unbelievable story. Johnny, I think I shared with you, I was so compelled by the story. Actually, my daughter saw it first, which was shocking to me. She's like, dad, you have to watch Last Chance University. And I was like, Sarah, I watched the football ones. And, and like, she goes, no, dad, it's not the football ones. It's this, it's this coach from Los Angeles is from East Los Angeles and it's a, called Last Chance University Basketball. So my daughter, Sarah, brought that to me and I watched this, Johnny, and let's just get started and dig in of like this coaching philosophy and some of these unbelievable takeaways, coach, if you're okay, if we just kind of dive in here. But one of the things that I love about your story is, is that you, it's not like Alabama, Johnny, where you got a you got a program, you got a playbook, and you got kids that are going to come, and they either follow the program or the playbook, or they're out. Like those are that's a different kind of kid that that you know what coach is dealing with is he's dealing with it's called Last Chance University for a reason, and he is finding these kids and he's understanding their stories. And there's this topic, Coach Mo, that we talk about, which is the ability for great leaders are great coaches. We believe great leaders are great coaches and they have the ability to meet kids wherever they're at and understand their story. Would you mind just kind of commenting on that? Like you have to understand a kid's story because, you know, the stories are, they're really complex and they're incredible. 
in, in you got to make sense of it in order to build the team around it. Could you talk about that? Yeah, I, I think we all get lost. We all grow. We all become, you know, maybe career success and uh, we have some success. Uh, but it's, you know, it's something that we could, it's so cliche. But we, you truly have to remember where you come from. And I don't care, even if we started out with our families were well off or not well off or whatever, there was always a, a humble beginning. And I think we, we forget. We get so consumed with our success and what we've done and what we've accomplished and we forget. And not looking at that young man or, you know, in you guys' world as that, that intern or uh, that, um, you know, entry level realizing that we were at the, the same level and realizing the fears that we had and the insecurities that we had and, and maybe the poor training that we've had. And, you know, in, in my sense, realizing the backgrounds of what, where I came from, I had good parents, but I was living amongst those who had, you know, some, you know, traumatic situations. And I, I grew up in that environment and, and, and I remember and when they come, I, I kind of lose patience because we've been winning and having success. And I want to continue that. And I kind of lose patience. But then when you stop, you have to stop and listen. And when you stop and listen, you remember. And then that's that's where, when, when that, that heart of, of care comes in, when you really listen intently on what's really going on in their lives. And that's, that's kind of where I draw back and say, I got to remember I was that person, too. Yeah, well, what's so coach, hard about that's 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 what allows you though, because you're so intimate with each of the players and each of their stories, you can read the individuals and read the team in the moment, and you rate know when to raise your voice, you know when to run with them, you know when to play ball with them, you know when to challenge them, give them the silent treatment, pray with them, motivate them with statements. You know, you're never the same. You're always in the moment and knowing what to say or do with these young men. What advice would you give to new leaders that in many cases are treating all their people the same? Well, and, and that's because of our maturity. We're so mature that we're, we're raising, we continue to raise our standard for those who are, who are trying to learn and are trying to struggle. And I have this conversation with, you know, some administrators all the time. I'm, I say, hey, there's a there's a new and a different 17 year old coming to our campus every year. And as I mature and I have this pattern and this 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 program and I have all of this lined out on uh, what I want to do every year, it doesn't matter. There's a different 17 year old that came from this area, came from that area. And if we want to have success, if I want to have success, I got to find out how uh, in, in most cases to, mo to get them to our, uh, to where we at or want to, where we want to work together versus me saying, Hey, you got to come and catch up. And I think we do that a lot. And there are some places where you can say, Hey, you got to catch up to us to, you know, if you want that success, if you want to, but for me, someone reached down and got me out of the gutter. You know, there were those, who I didn't know how to function. I was insecure. I didn't know how to all the way be successful. And they reached and got me and they did it with a level of humility, not a level of arrogance. Like, you know what? You're dirty. Come with me. No, they were like, dude, I understand here. Let's wipe you off and let's pull you up. And those are the ones who had the most impact on my life. And I think uh, in, with leadership, uh, those who had that compassion and those uh, as leaders, they met me kind of where I was and they didn't condemn me for not understanding. They didn't condemn me for not doing things right. Those are the ones that, that had the most impact on my life. And I got excited about uh, wanting to work for them. I got excited about, or, you know, what, what's, what's even crazier is I didn't want to disappoint those yeah. who helped me, who really uh, cared about me. I didn't want to disappoint them. And, and there's some, uh, level of accountability when you do that. If some of these young men don't want to disappoint me and they say, oh, co coach, I, you know, then they want to work for you. Then they want to play for you if they don't necessarily want to disappoint you. Uh, along with 
Uh, if you can't get them to not disappoint themselves, then okay, let's, let's not disappoint me because I helped you. I brought you out of it. And then eventually they learn how to uh, live out this career pattern or this career or this, this basketball lifestyle. And then after they, they get that, they learn how to move on on their, on their own. But it's, 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 um, it's a, it's a infant stage, man. You, it starts at an infant stage, those emotions that are there for the vulnerable, the young and the vulnerable or the, the, the uneducated, they're vulnerable. We're, we're all vulnerable at that state. And we were all there. I mean, you got the, you got the nice pepper gray, man. You looking good for him. I don't, I don't, for our I, listeners, for our listeners, he's talking to me. You know, nice full head of hair with the pepper gray. He's talking to well, me. You're seasoned. You guys are seasoned. <laughs> and, and and when I look at you and I'm talking to you, I feel like you guys kind of get it and you you understand. But there's some that are insecure, man. And I I'm, I my, my heart is broken because they could have left me in the dust. There's a lot of people that could have left me in the dust, and Amen. and I wouldn't be able to get it. My my first yeah. you know head coach that that hired me. I re- I look back and I seen how like dude I was so immature like dude he he allowed me to make those mistakes and he allowed me to to uh, be young as a young assistant coach or a coach or a player and I'm looking back like dude I used to act just like that I was like that so I can't be belligerent to my assistant coach and be like hey that's not how we do it look man you got to get it and I remember I was acting like that I just. Hey, look, when we go out and recruit, this is what we want to do. Maybe we don't communicate like that. Maybe we do this. Same thing with my players. I remember a player gets upset, and I'm just like, man, I acted just like that. And I just got to have a heart. I can't 100% go in and say that's unacceptable. I got to explain to them why it's unacceptable and how it's going to affect you if we don't change the behavior. Um, It takes patience. but Johnny, everything the coach is talking about, Mm-hmm. takes so much effort. It's like, I think about Coach Calipari at Kentucky. Like, I mean, I'm not, no knock on him. I'm just saying, he's got a choice. <laughs> he's like, you up level to the program if you want to be here or you're out because he's got, but coach, what you're talking about is, is you have to balance and, and everything that you just said takes so much effort as a leader Talk to us a little bit about how you balance, like, you have to get these kids to mesh. You got kids that are acting out or kids that are just, they don't know how to act. And you have to teach them and you have to bring them along. At the same time, you got to run a program. So leaders talk about, I can't let one person bring the program down. I can't let one person ruin the locker room. But you also have this heart that says, as long as this kid trying or committed, I ain't going to let him go. How do you balance that? All of the mojo that happens around these kids kind of finding their voice and expressing themselves and, and you're working with them and meeting where they are, but you're also trying to move a team in one direction. How in the world do you balance that and just not say to yourself in a private moment, I'm going to cut that kid loose, man. I, I got the team to think about. Mm-hmm. How do you do it? Well, I think for me, it's uh, it's being consistent uh, with with the, the overall disposition of how what we want with our team and how we want our team to, to function, being consistent with that. And then at times stepping away and isolating a young man and saying, hey, let's change behavior. But I think being consistent with that until we can get everybody on the same page and not deviating from that. So let's say I got nine on, uh, on, on, you know, nine, that's, we're all on the same page, Yeah. but I got four that's not on the same page. I'm not going to stop and give attention to the negative behavior, uh, necessarily. I may allow it to go, but I'm going to show that negative behavior that we're consistent. I have, we have no energy. We have no space. We have no, uh, attention to this negative behavior. We continue to move. And sometimes you have to ignore negative behavior. And you know what? There's some, you know, silence is golden. Sometimes we, we, we hear it all the time. Speech is silver. Silence is golden. And sometimes silence and ignoring that behavior and just taking the collective few that's on the same page. And we're moving forward with this positive energy. They're on the outside. 
And so there's some manipulation and there's some psychology yeah. that comes to it where let's move forward and let's make them feel uncomfortable. Instead yeah. of us feeling uncomfortable because there's one or two that's stepping out of line, let's make them feel uncomfortable being on the outside. Yeah. And let's make this look great. Let's make them want to be a part of this inside and correct their behavior. And then yeah. I can pull away at times and say, hey, correct your behavior or this is how we need to do. This is how you got to change your response. What's going on that's preventing you from being a part of this special moment, this special group. You're losing out on special opportunities. What is preventing you? That's a different conversation. And then you know what? The people that are involved in this high energy and this success and what's going on, they're looking around. Is coach going to respond? What is coach going to do? Well, what he sees is coach is moving forward with this positive energy. And if they make the choice to leave themselves behind, they make that choice. I'm not going to give up on you. You're giving up on yourself by not joining the group, by not coming in, in, in the group. And so I think I take that approach Physically, when we're in the in the present, we're on the court. I'm like, I'm gonna focus my energy at a high level on the positive and what's going on. Yeah, let's go, let's go. And occasionally, I'll stop and make a point and correct behavior. But I'm not gonna allow that to dominate what we have going on or the movement that we have going on. And so I, I think that's important. And I learned that from one of my mentors. You know, I would see him, and I started coaching with him. I'm watching him. I'm like isn't he going to comment on this kid that doesn't want to run hard? And we're just going and energy is moving and boom. And he, all of a sudden he looks like a far outsider because of his poor energy when he's trying to pull everybody else down. Well, you know what? We eventually pull him up and he notices we ignore him and he wants attention. Wow. So in order for you to get attention, you got to jump in and have this energy with us. Otherwise you're on the outside. Otherwise we give you no attention and, and there's some, and I think there is a skill to that. There is a, there is a, uh, you just, there's a feel, there's a sense where I can't allow this energy to take over. We got to move forward with what we're doing. And the best way I can help him is to set an example so he can see that we're going to move forward with energy. I know you got issues, but here we go. If you want to be a part, come on in. Everybody's going to win if you jump in. If we're going to win anyway. You can jump in. So I think that's kind of the from from an energy approach or a disposition yeah. approach, how we approach every day when we have this negative behavior. Yeah. One point during a practice, Joe steamed off the court. He got dressed and he left. And somehow you knew to leave him alone. And maybe that's because you were so intimate with Joe and you were so intimate with the players. And you never challenged him to get back on the court. And maybe you knew there was no talking to Joe. And maybe you wanted to leave him alone, like you said, and, and see how bad he really wanted to be part of the team. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was that was an amazing moment as a leader to watch you do that. And um, and I guess, like you said, if you know your players, you know the team, you got a positive momentum going. There's times as a leader when you may want to leave things alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not get rid of them. You're more than welcome to be here, but we're not going to follow that energy. Yeah, at the same time, though, Coach, you you proved that they would have to give up on themselves before you were going to go give up on them. And even Joe, with the many challenges that he had in the show, he eventually said that you were the only person that ne never gave up on him. That was a touching moment, yeah. you know. So, Coach, regardless of what happens with anything else you do in life, Mm -hmm. regardless of what happens with these Netflix series or what have you, your impact on that one human being, and I'm not going to give it away. You got to go look at Netflix university. And then after you watch that series and Johnny's talking about Joe, that was single-handedly one of the greatest experiences of leadership that I watched. It's what led me. I picked up the phone and called you. I don't, if you remember, like I sent you an email and then I picked up the phone and called you and said, dude, how can I help? Like, how can we help you do what you're doing? And then, so after you watch that uh, Netflix university, the first series and you watch what happened to Joe Hampton, then Google Joe Hampton today. And coach, I just want to say to you, you know, not only to Joe, congratulations to Joe, 
but congratulations to you. If you do nothing else in my mind, what you did uh, had an impact on one individual. And then by me watching that and then the rest of the world watching that and the outcome that happened, holy smokes, dude, your playbook works. It works. Yeah. Well, I think it's something in everyone, all of us. Uh, there are some people who I've run across. It just seems like there's just unbelievably pure evil. <laughs> but there's a heart in everybody, man, and there's a diamond in everybody. And I just think we just got to get to it. And there are some things that's happened. Uh, but you know what? If there's a, a lot of crap around it, I mean, that's more pressure and the, the, the more the diamond, the beauty of the diamond. And we can see the beauty. Uh, and I'm just, uh, you know, amazed. And it just constantly reminds me. And you know what? I actually forget. I would have, I have to go back and remember I don't even remember because I forgive. I can't even remember. Uh, I can, but I choose not to remember all that I went through because I yeah. see now the results. But what 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 makes me remember is what I'm going through right now. I have the same. I have more Joe Hamptons right now. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I have kids wow. that do not want to be helped whatsoever. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm done. I, I, you, you constantly say that, but then when I see him again, it's like, I can't be done because if I say I'm done with you, then I don't know who else is going to, who's going to deal or deal with it. Or everybody else said they're done. They're done. They're done. And I'm like the last person. And if I say I'm done, then it, man, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. So I'm looking and I'm like, man, I can't just stop. I got to continue to help them. And it, it takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of effort. Um, but if you say you want to do it and you say you want to make an impact, then it's a lot of energy and it's, it's a life commitment. It's a life commitment. Well, Coach, I mean, it's obvious that you're a selfless leader. I mean, you give your heart and soul and everything to these young men to help them get a scholarship. Can you talk a little bit about why, you know, great leaders have to be selfless instead of selfish? Because you see a lot of coaches, a lot of leaders that are, yeah. selfish and they wonder why they can't bond with the team and they yeah. can't motivate the team. Yeah. I just, I think it's important in, in leadership. It, it, you know, one, uh, I had a mentor say, Hey, uh, you know, leadership, you know, you direct behavior and in order to direct behavior in leadership, I think you have, have to have that, that personal uh, relationship. And when you go down and you have those personal relationships and you live out, I think it's important to live out uh, the burdens uh, with these young men. And I, that's what I'm called to do. It's not everybody's call, but it's a ministry to me. And I think in my relationship and my faith, uh, you know, with God, I mean, that's what he did for me. And I'm just convicted to do that. I'm convicted. Uh, it, it never goes away. Sometimes I feel like I want to do vacations and I want to just, you know, be a professor and count, you know, you just try to get wins and all that. But there's always, I don't know. I think like in scripture, I got this thorn that always draws me back to having compassion for others as others had, you know, compassion for me and drew out of me. I mean, I was this mischievous, uh, you know, I wasn't gross with my immorality or whatever, but I was just a normal mischievous, you know, probably a little arrogant jerk and thought I knew everything. And, uh, had some failures and probably could have went the wrong direction. And there were some people, man, that, that just directed me out of that. And, and I'm always, that thorn is there, man. we we'll always feel that and always got to go back and remember. And that, that's just the conviction. I believe of my faith that, that uh, that's what, you know, Christ did for me. I got to go back and, and help them. Uh, I've had many opportunities to over the, I mean, I could have doubled my salary here in the last year or whatever, you know, tripled my salary. Sure. Um, but I couldn't see myself going. And there's a lot of people that reached out that want me to do so many things. Yeah. And they're like, dude, why don't you, you could cash in on this and that, but I can't do what, what John just said. I couldn't help that one. Like they, it takes so much energy to help one that I don't have time to run across the world and speak and do seminars and write 10 books. And I don't have time for that. I have people want me to do television shows and 
like be on like Survivor and do like crazy. Stuff. <laughs> like, dude, I, I, to be honest, I probably could have made. Um, every, I know everybody will think I'm crazy. I probably could could have made a million dollars here in the no last doubt. Year. And no I, doubt. I just like it's just I, I just don't have time. What am I going to do about the kid who's counting on me to show up to study hall if I leave and run around and do that? And I might not even be good at that. I know at least I'm kind of good at helping somebody. I might not be good at running around. I might make money and not be good at it. But then guess what? I'll be detached if I leave uh, this world and where my where my heart is uh, just for just for a dollar. And I think I think that's kind of, that's me. I don't think it's everybody. Some people are good at making money and being, you know, I guess they say cold and heartless and you go make money. And maybe you help people by giving money. But for me, I got to help one individual. And one of the things I heard you energy. say, yeah. one of the things I heard you say, and I have it written down, I, you, you taught it to me the last time. And then when we had a podcast, we talked about it. And I just want you to, I just want you to reiterate it here. I think one of the huge themes in your leadership style is when I heard you say in the, in the Netflix series, you said rules without relationships equals rebellion. 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 And yeah. I've got that, that written was, down, man. man. And I, I thought, me too. That was holy smokes. Like that is like people that lead through compliance. Yeah. And this is how we're going to do things. And you will comply versus the people that lead through building relationships. And they focus on the why to do something. And the what and the how is easy. Where did you learn that, dude? Like, where did you learn that? Yeah, I, uh, good friend of mine. We played together. Actually, he was just coaching with the uh, with the Lakers. I played with him in college, and uh, I started coaching his younger brother. And his dad came up to me, man, who you know passed away. And he said, "John, you're coaching amazing." He said, "Let me whisper something in you." He hugged me. He would give the best hugs. His name was uh, Mark Pemberthy, but Mike Pemberthy coached with the Lakers and just, you know, I think they just got let go. He was with that, with that group, with coach. His dad hugs me and whispers in my ear, rules, just remember, rules without relationship equals uh, rebellion. And I yeah. just was like, why would he just tell me that? And that's been stuck in my ear. And I think he got it passed down from someone. But that was like the first kind of, you know, uh, solid wisdom, like just pinpoint wisdom, uh, impressionable w wisdom that I got. He told me and it stuck with me. Uh, and I always remember that, like whenever I see a young man or anybody who doesn't want to listen to me, even little kids, it works on little babies. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can take a five year old and you say, hey, sit down and do this. They won't sit down. You take a five year old and you give before you tell them to sit down, you say, hey, here's color do you like to color do what is this what's your favorite color what do you like to eat what's your snack then then you tell the five-year-old hey have a seat here and they, guess what they're gonna go sit out you know uh it's the same thing with children it's the same thing with adults it it just works man to build a relationship because they know you have a genuine uh interest in them and what's you won't lead them astray man what's uh, amazing my is son, my son yeah, go ahead. Uh, one of the players has a little kid here Unfortunately, you know, but it's fortunate, unfortunate, single dad, kid is running all over the place, just going crazy. He's like, coach, you can't get him to sit down. You can't. And I'm just like, okay, all right, fine. I give him something to play with. Here's the day. What's your name? What do you want to eat? What's the game? Here's a Gatorade. Here's this. Here's that. You know, just all these little things, talking to him, coming on his level with communication. And then all of a sudden the kid looks up at me. And he's like, this guy is different, you know, because I'm communicating on his level. I'm talking with him. I'm talking about cartoons. He's like, what? You you know what I'm you you know what what I'm you know what I just watched this morning? Like this guy is is here. He's talking my language. And then all of a sudden I can say, go sit over here. And then he like calmed down and he sat down. And it, it was uh, and I think that that is some truth into that and in, in adults and at every level, man. At every What's level. amazing is that in corporate world, the tolerance for the time that it takes to build those relationships versus the easier in mentality, people think it's easier just to make people comply. 
I, I thought about something. I wrote this down for you. Do not confuse coaches' kindness with weakness. And that is a very powerful statement when I think about you and the way that you build relationships, the way that you invest emotion and compassion into these individuals. It is not to be confused with weakness because it is very, very, it's very, very powerful. And that's not so celebrated a lot of time, Johnny, when you see people struggling on their teams, you'll see a leader's leader say, you're not tough enough on them. You got to make them comply or what have you. And it's like they're smoking something if they think mm -hmm. that is, that is going to work. Yeah, so right. I, I really like that about you. Do not confuse your kindness and compassion with weakness. It's actually very powerful. Well, well he's so uh, intimate uh, with the situation with Joe. Uh, and I think a lot of times we would see and maybe I didn't want to embarrass Joe. Maybe yeah. I knew that he couldn't wouldn't be able to take that as much as me going behind closed doors. And I shared with him one time, I said, Joe, let me tell you something. The next time I asked the guys, and this was private, they didn't even have this on film. I need you to be disciplined. You need to let me discipline you. You need to let me. I said, that's a part of being a man, a part of growing, a part of being leader, a leadership. That's a part of changes. Allow me to discipline you as well. I knew he was at a maturity level. He just, you know, he was at a mature level. He just didn't know how to be a leader in that maturity. Uh, his responses were poor because he was one of the better players. He was uh, older than some of those guys. But let's use that and let's use it in a way that if you allow me to discipline you in this situation, you will have an impact on these guys. And I think there's some some lessons in, in, in understanding how to teach them how to be disciplined, you know, how to accept criticism, how to accept – and, uh, but it just takes time, man. It, it takes so much time. And, and uh, when everybody asks, well, how do you do it? It's not just going out. I told one coach, hey, uh, maybe take the young man out to – they called me and asked me a couple months ago, maybe take him out to dinner and, you know, just build a relationship. They took him out to dinner, you know, once or twice. And No, it's not just – not the it, – it's, it's the idea. It's not the action. It's the idea of taking him out to dinner. It's, yeah. it's, it's building a relationship. It's not the action that's going to do it. It's the ideal of building a relationship. And what are your intentions behind taking them out to dinner? Finding out, man, I got to find out how to help you. I got to find out how to help you. Um, and, and I think that's, that's how I approach it. Um, not to celebrate it myself or anything, but that's just me, man. And, and, and it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Well, Coach, I mean, you're so intimate with those players. You also knew how to get them to build relationships among themselves. At one time, you took them to a mountain retreat, if I remember. And yeah. Prior to that, what we saw in the show is Joe and Malik were actually arguing a little bit on the court. Mm -hmm. And it looked like they didn't even want part of each other. Yeah. And then after the retreat, you saw in the show where Joe was actually coaching Malik on, you know, how to box people out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as a leader, I guess it's good again because you're so intimate with the players and the team. How do you know, hey, man, this is time for a team binding exercise, not just me on one on one, but the team with the team? Yeah, it's just I think it's important to step away, too, and show that not just because we're on the basketball court, I want you to do life. I want you to do life this way because we're on the basketball court. But. I want you to do life this way in in every area. And I think it's important to get away from work, to get away from t from the team environment or basketball environment with everyone to say, like, look, it's the same message, regardless if we're on the basketball court or off the basketball court. And I think that's where we can learn our lessons when we're on a team retreat. Like, no, it's the same deal. We have the same goals, same accomplishments. You know, I'm, I, I want you to have the same uh, expectations on yourself about moving forward in life, not just because we're on the court and we want to win basketball games, but I do, truly do care. And I think when you step away and you have a, a retreat atmosphere that, and we can see each other outside of, you know, on the court that we can understand that, that we truly, we, we got some goals too that we want to accomplish together. Um, and it's not just about basketball. It's about, about life. You know, you can step away and get into a different space, get, get into mm. a different area and 
and uh, and appreciate some other things, but it's still the same thing at heart. But we can appreciate some other things. So the other you thing, you also coach. let them. You also let them make fun of you. Each, each guy got to get up. That's <laughs> yeah. hilarious. Do that was coach hilarious. Invitation. Yeah. That was fantastic. Hey, you know. hey. The other thing, Coach. Um, I really love your. With all this going on, you still have the discipline within yourself to focus on fundamentals. And what I love about the way that you teach fundamentals is at the same time you're teaching fundamentals, you're giving them a peek into the future. And I can't remember exactly what you call it in basketball. I was kind of a football guy. But when, when they, they take a shot, and whatever you called it, it was it was matriculating to the middle of the after the shot. It was matriculating into the middle of the court, and you were over and over and over again. And then you tell a story about some dude that like got a Division One scholarship just for doing what you're trying to show. It's like after you shoot, follow yeah. the ball and move in towards the center. Would yeah. you talk a little bit about you can't teach a fundamental? without giving them a peek in what it looks like in the future successfully. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, even in the, the I know in the business world or, I mean, we, people talk about sales, I mean, or even interviewing or even selling someone or bringing someone into your world is we have to have those stories. We have to have be able to share those stories. And I think when, instead of just giving them the rule and telling them to do something, but really sharing with them and, and, and making them, helping them live out uh, why we're doing it and why yeah. uh, it's going to work for them because it's worked before. And here's an example of it working. And absolutely, Frank Burns, he, he, man, that dude would shoot the ball. We got this free throw line rebound we call. and we Yeah, that's right. Free throw ball. line rebound. Shoot. Yeah. Instead of standing there and watching your shot, we drift there. And it helps us transition wise. It helps us get long rebounds. It helps in so many ways. So that little thing that we never thought mattered, we have to share because none of the players would do it. They won't do it because they'd be like, this doesn't even matter. What is this? What like I've never done this before. But to be able to share the story of why it matters and then uh, about how the success of doing this small little detail. Uh, and then you get to understand, OK, now I can take that because I share that story to another detail and say, hey, do this detail because I just share with you that th this detail created some monstrous success. Yeah. So we can just focus on the details and the things that we don't think that matter. We can we can all end up where, you know, where we dream of being. Uh, and I, I think I think we, we, we're in a selling dreams business, man. We got to sell these dreams and make them believe these, these dreams are going to happen. And you know what? Sometimes as leaders, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like, I don't know how this dream is going to happen, <laughs> <laughs> but I got to sell it. So yeah. that the energy goes that direction every year. I'm like, I don't, you know, we, we as leaders, of course, we sometimes are sitting there like, I don't, I, I just don't see it, but I, I can see it. I may not see it with this specific group, but I can see it with the specific group. I like. I don't know how it's going to happen. I can see the end. That's what it is. I see the end, and I can see the celebration. I can see the move on, the success, the career. But I can't see how I'm going to get them to do it. But I have to keep pressing to get them to do it mm. because I see them there. I got this one young man I have right now, and it's hard to get him to move. It's hard to get him to – but something just, I just see him. I keep saying, dude, I see you at Nebraska. Something in my mind just visually sees him there. And you know what? You'll see him in the, the next show. And he'll return with me this year, coming up in the 22, 23 year. And I keep seeing Nebraska. But when I see him every day, I don't see Nebraska. You know, yeah. I, I just, I see you there, but I, I'm just like, how am I going to get you there? I don't know because you're not. So it kind of keeps me pressing. And I think as, as leaders, we can see the overall picture. We can see the vision. Uh, and it's not happening. We, we hear all these CEO success stories. Everyone that's a CEO has the living in a car story. And they see it, but they're not seeing it. They're living in a car. They're, their bank account is 
you know, in, in code red. Like mm-hmm. they 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 can see it, but they not they're not seeing it. And just because you're not seeing it doesn't mean that that vision is not going to come to reality. But we do have to sell those dreams. And uh, although there's some that that may uh, and I'm watching. I mean, you probably are watching that that series. I'm I'm watching this this deal with the Lakers. You know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But I mean, yeah. uh, you're looking at Dr. Buss and you're like, he's he just sees it and nobody else sees it. And he's selling a dream that's not even there. And everybody's believing this dream. And it happens. You know, I haven't watched it all yet, but I could we 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 all know the end of the story. Yeah. Uh and, and it's just amazing that that leaders have that ability to see a, a vision and a dream that and try to sell it to everybody and they're like, well, I guess if he sees it, I guess we just follow it. And as leaders, these great CEOs, they they have some uncertainty too. And just like these young men or young women or ladies, but you know, as leaders, we gotta we we have to sell it, and we have to sell it with a smile and with energy, like it's going to happen. Even though sometimes I'm like, I just I just don't see it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, a lot of those kids are innocent, right? They're, so there's this little innocent resistance, right? They haven't been lo- around long enough to have to ask, be upset and say, you know, what if? And then you take somebody like talking about the Lakers, Kobe Bryant, who I think said, you know, the dream is not the destination. The dream's in the hard work and the process, the journey. But those kids are not, they haven't evolved enough like a Kobe Bryant did to be able to look back and and, and understand where the dream really is, right? And that's yeah. the hard part, I think, about motivating them, no coach? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that's, you know, they haven't had enough uh, life experiences, enough right. failures and successes. And so just selling them on, we got to have these small successes. Just having a great academic semester gets them bought in a little bit mm. closer. Uh, and that's one of the first things, uh, that we do. And I sell the parents. Once I share this dream, like, Hey, come here, we'll help you get to where you need to be. And one of the first things we try to focus on is having that success in that first semester that they're here academically before we even kind of step on the court, you know, the season starts in maybe November, but school will start, you know, late August. And so they start to see the success and we press that and they feel good about themselves in that small level of success, because that's usually one of the, the places they struggle the most is academically. So I think that's important, too, is finding a, a small area of success. Yeah, it's not the ultimate goal, but a small area of success that they've never had success in. And they're like, wow, I, it, 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 it does look positive here. Mm. You know, it, it, it looks like uh, I can see because I've had success in this and uh, I've, uh, although the ultimate goal is to win a championship and get a scholarship and move on. But these first couple of weeks, I'm looking at success academically, which I never had. Uh, that gives them some energy. That gives them some enthusiasm. And now all of a sudden they're, they're bright eyed. And I see it happen with a lot of young men. Uh, they become bright eyed, like, wow, that's, I'm really doing well academically. Uh, I'm really feeling disciplined. I'm really, you know, uh, yeah. you know, on the right path. Like, yeah, I'm, you're I'm connecting the, right the dots for them. You're connecting yeah. the dots for them. Yeah. And they, they, they feel good about themselves. So allowing them or putting them in a position, even though I know that they're going to have success, I kind of set them up to have success uh, and create this, this kind of little bubble where like, okay, I got to make sure they have success in this first window so that they, that builds that trust. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and sometimes we kind of leave some of them out there and say, no, they got to learn how to ride them. Let them fall on their own on the bike. Well, there's nothing wrong with kind of, you know, not letting them see your hand holding them, holding them up. Like, oh, look at you. You're riding a bike. But I'm really holding holding it up and they don't know. And then they feel good about themselves. And they're like, yeah, I'm really riding this bike, you know, when they're insecure. Now, when they get a little prideful, they be like, look at me. Get out, get away. I can ride the bike. Okay, go ahead and ride the bike. And they fall, you know, you got to let them fall. But yeah. when they they need that, you you got to create a little bubble of success and allow them. It's kind of like if you're going out and you're doing a sales, you know that the kid is going to get the sale 
and but you go along with him and you sit back and you're like, wow, great job. You got the sale. But you knew he was going to get it because that's a client that you've worked with before or a group that you worked with before and you knew it's going to happen. But they need that as well. They need that as well. No doubt. No doubt. So, Johnny, um, yeah. one one of the things that I know, Coach, in the pregame, you're like, hey, this is what a servant leader is, Johnny, right? Because we want to make sure we can get to a part we say, how can we help Coach? Um and and how can we hope how can we help the team one thing i just want you to comment on real quick we've had a theme going through these podcasts on how difficult it is to recruit you not only have recruiting uh mastery from you were trained in corporate america you were a technical recruiter back in the day and now you are a master recruiter in in sports do you have just some advice for us uh in a War on talent all over the world. It's the same thing. There's a war on talent. It, do you have words of advice on how to be a great recruiter today? Yeah, I, I think um, it's being able to sell who you, who you are and being authentic to who you are. Um, and I think w- when it all started right, right away, uh, I didn't try to sell anything that I wasn't. And I think a lot of times we, we, we have some, we, we're, we were a startup. We didn't have success here. And I think having the ability to, to sell and to be able to bring in those who you, you feel uh, can like buy into who you are and want to buy into uh, advancing who you are to, 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 to that next level. And I think not, you know, really trying to sell something that we're not. And, and we've evolved, and now I'm selling a different message yeah. of who we are and what we plan to help you be. But walking through the door, I just, you know, my best player, I said, you know what, uh, this is my background. This is what I've done and what I, I want to help you do. But I have no one like you, and I need you to be the face. And so at that moment, you you got to be authentic with what you're looking for in individuals, and say, this is what I need from you. And this is what I want. And you're the one who can, and selling them, like, you're the one who I believe that can do this. And then now we're at a point where I have a lot of young men that want to come and this is a high level program and we're doing well. And now there's some, even some standards I can set and say, well, now we have a standard and I need you to understand that this is the standard and this is where we want to be. I'm going to help you through it but this is where we are and I need you to understand and be bought into that and, and be bought into the process. Just understand that when you walk through the door, I know you're not going to be perfect, but understand that when you walk through the door. So I think it's just being true to who you are as, as a, as a program and as a, whatever, as a company, as if you're a startup, I don't care what it is or you're starting something new. I think it's just being authentic and letting them see that you're real and one, because there's a lot of fake out there in companies and in programs and in universities. Uh, there's a lot of fake and they, they yeah. hey, come into our program and we're going to win championships and we're going, you know what, for me is like, dude, come here and I'm a care. That, that, that's, that's you. The message every, yeah. I'm going to care enough to help you reach your dream. You know, that's so, that's um, so and you. Much, and, yeah. and, and coach, how much are you looking at now that you can kind of, Set some standards. How much are you looking at character as you're recruiting some of the kids now? Yeah, I just, you know what? I, I really want people here who are attracted to our message. You know, the character part, uh, you know, if I was at Duke University, it, it would matter. You know, I'm, I'm forking out whatever it costs, 30, 40, 50,000 a year. So I can set those parameters. You know, I can mm-hmm. say, hey, I, but here, I, I really want people who are attracted to this. If, if the character is, if you're struggling in character a little bit, but if you're attracted to the grind that we have here and you want to be a part of it, then I know that the character things I'm going to be able to help you get through. Um, I know, of course, I'm, I'm, I have a standard of, of some winning characteristics. You know, the only thing that will bother me, there's one there's one character, character trait. Uh, I can deal with anything. I can actually deal with maybe a poor response. 
I cannot deal with quitting. That is the one thing I cannot deal with is a quitting response. If you have a response where you have a poor attitude or uh, 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 arrogant attitude or whatever, I can do, or maybe a hard head attitude. No, I want to do it my way. What I can't deal with is quitting because you're quitting on yourself. You're quitting on us. And we all lose. If you're in actively engaged with us and you quit, then we all lose. Yeah. Uh, that's one trait that bothers me. And if there's a pattern of that, then that's something that I can't tolerate. Hey, Johnny. Uh, and I'll try to help with, help you through it, but I can't tolerate it. I love it. Hey, Johnny, I want to, uh, I want to, I'm telling the audience here, we, uh, there was like one stipulation that coach had for this uh, interview today. He was like, I have to be able to get to study hall because yeah. if I don't show up and I'm not at study hall, then I, how do I expect these kids are going to be on study hall? And so I want to honor that. And I'm so, I'm like free. I'm sweating here. Cause I'm like, there's so much more we want to ask you. So Johnny, I'm not going to do the recap. Like we normally do. I want to go right to the point. Okay. Coach. Yeah, we love you. This is what we, we want to talk about. Yeah. We love you. We love what you do. We loved you two years ago when we saw what you guys were doing. We've reached out to your university before and said, hey, how can we make sure that when our audience like wants to donate to your program and folks, listeners, I just want you to listen up, not just for the entertainment factor that you, you, you saw last chance university basketball, but here's a guy who's swinging for the fences, making sacrifices for his family, could go and make three to four times the amount of money in other programs. And he's being a servant leader. It wasn't lost on me what you just said. You know, they're giving a seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year scholarship at Duke or what have you. You guys aren't doing that. Like when I talked to you the last time you said, Hey John, I'm talking about cheese on cheeseburgers. I'm talking about extra <laughs> socks. No, this is serious. Like, no, like, no I'm it's talking serious. About, I'm yeah. talking about extra socks. You said to me, I'm talking about John going to a hotel every now and then that has the doors on the inside of the hotel <laughs> versus the doors on the outside of the right. hotel. So, yeah. Coach, um, uh, give us, uh, give us a, 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 a little update on we know that a 501c3 was established we worked with Dr. Roman before in the future. The the donations that go can go. Is that still intact? We'll put yeah, it in absolutely. the show notes and that goes right to your program. Absolutely. And I appreciate you meeting, you know, it, it absolutely helps establish some accountability to saying, hey, there are people like like you guys, John, that that have a special interest in the athletics or our men's basketball program. And that 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 puts some accountability on, hey, let's make sure that we are getting some direct support. And if, if you want to, you know, support directly, it's it's ELAC, which is our uh, our school, uh, you know, the acronym E-L-A-C foundation dot com and simply go there. And there's links where you can go to athletic support and it goes directly to us. And you write a side notice for men's basketball. So it's, it's just that simple. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's uh, a tax, you know, deduction and all that. It's, it's been uh, great and it's been a big help, but again, it's, it's not overbearing without, without selling out. And there's a lot of times I haven't sold out. There's guys that want to do a lot, but at what cost? And I'm like, you know, I'm not interested And you know, heck you want to give a million dollars, but I have to do this, this, and this. I'm not interested. I'm interested in helping these young men. So there's those that have, have, have given and, and it's been a big help. We were able to take three trips this year because of it. Um, Amen. but it starts all over again. And every year we got to make sure that we can provide those experiences and it helps the young man. And like, like you said, it's not, it's not much because they're only here for a short amount of time, but, you know, instead of going to a sandwich spot when we're on the road, on a six hour road trip, we can stop at a restaurant versus stop, stopping at a, uh, you know, a fast food spot. And, you know, just someone simple. It can help. I, I, it literally helps. I said, oh, I saw a thousand dollars come in. I know we got 
we can stop twice this year now instead of, you know, <laughs> make it. I had yeah. a coach one time, he made peanut butter and jelly and put them in brown bags when we had a long trip, you know. Uh, but now we can stop twice and the guys can eat good. And then they can go to sleep. Because we're not, they're not going to sleep on a burger. They can go to sleep on a good meal with some carbs and a good steak, you know, some yeah. good protein in their bodies. And if you can, you know how that feels when you go to sleep on different foods and you can wake up and feel good about yourself and sleep in a good bed. Uh, that that my, my wife call it, uh, she calls it the itchy motels, you know, that's what my <laughs> she, you know, <laughs> my wife says she remembers I'm with her you know yeah. I'm, saying, I'm not standing in the, in the itchy motel itchy motel <laughs> I'm so with her she said I'm not doing that and I know yeah. what she means you go in those you really do you itch after those some of those oh, days at, yeah she said I'm not staying at those places and so the guys if they stay at a place they feel good and it's not just about winning a game or feel but it's feeling good that they're making progress in life and doing something uh, that's worthwhile and they deserve it for the hard work that they've, that they've done. So coach the, with those links, ELAC foundation.com, there's, there's direct links where the money would go straight to your basketball program. Yeah. Right? You make sure you okay. click on athletics yep. and there's a drop down that says athletics. And then in a note, you put men's basketball and we have a relationship now because of John, we brought this together. He met with our president and and some other people uh, that they know that that you know what we would really have to make sure that they get this money uh, because we we truly have some some supporters out there. So awesome. so coach, we love you. We love what you do for our listeners. This is a guy that is building men and women for others and building the future with investing in young men and women. And I just think it's uh, if it's on your heart, if you hear a message today and you go back and watch Netflix, if it's on your heart, uh, you know, we have a very philanthropic audience. I'm just kind of putting the message out there for you, folks. If, if you can help, please do, because not for the inter- just the entertainment factor, which we all benefit from watching. But we coach is actually building men and women for 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 the future of our country. And we really, really appreciate you, dude. Really appreciate you. Thanks for coming on again, brother. Coach, so grateful to have you, man. And I really love your leadership and love what you're doing for those young men. You you should truly be appreciated. Thank you, man. Keep praying for me, man. It's hey, it don't get easy. It don't get easy. Uh, I gotta keep reminding myself and uh, you guys help by just saying thank you for what you do. And I said, okay, now I'm going to go and study hall and uh, remember that I got to keep helping them. It's the same 17, 18 year old kid, but uh, that's what I'm in it for. Coach him up, brother. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. You better okay. hurry up before they take off from that. Study yeah. Hall. They don't see me here. I got two minutes. They'll be like, oh, coach is not here. Let me get out of here. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys. Well done. All right. See, all right. thank you. And thank you all for listening to Revenue Builder. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Be sure to check us out at forcemanagement.com.